Music to his ears. Jared Perry breaking down as he's surprised with the district's highest honor. This year's Baltimore City Public Schools Teacher of the Year is Mr. Perry brings the power of arts, passion, and commitment to his students at Booker T. Washington Middle School. I try my best to be genuine. I try my best to be real. I try my best to be consistent all the way through, committed to completion. That's something we teach at our church, and so I try my best to do that, and they see it. Booker T. hasn't had musicals in more than a decade. Now the students are preparing for a production of Annie. Superintendent Dr. Sonia Santelises says many of the students come to the school with no prior musical exposure. He's just done amazing work at Booker T. He has a fabulous instrumental program, and I would say the overwhelming majority, if not all, of his instrumental music students come into sixth grade never having any exposure to music, reading music, and by the time they leave, many are in or kids or um, a going on to play band at high school level. She says his heart for the city and young people is a driving force enriching students' lives. This just adds to their sense of purpose, their belief in themselves and their potential because they have one of the most excellent teachers, the teacher of the year, um, as their music teacher. Absolutely phenomenal. It's such a blessing. To God be the glory. The Morgan State grad says collaboration with other educators made him the teacher he is today. And for the past six years, students from UMBC have been observing him in the classroom. It means the world because they say teaching is a thankless profession. But when you do it right, parents will always say, thank you for what you've done with my kids. Thank you for what you're doing with my students. Students will come back and say, thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you. His message? Baltimore. Better days ahead. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe all the nonsense. There's so many great things going on. Y'all, this is West Baltimore. West Baltimore. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It means you need to look a little closer. Perry will receive a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, let's look a little closer, y'all. Let's look a little closer, man. Um, Let's look a little closer, man. Let's look a little closer, man. Let's look a little closer, man. Um, and I tell you, it's been such a difficult year. And to get some perspective, we actually spoke to a student from your alma mater, Jason. Yeah. I've covered all sides of this issue for decades in Baltimore. But this week, we're looking at the so-called collateral damage associated with this uptick of youth violence, talking with people who you might not think are impacted. Tonight, we start with a student who attends Baltimore City College High School, and we asked her to share her thoughts in writing. Baltimore. My name is Lillian Green, and this is my message to you. She is 16, an aspiring journalist with an open letter to Baltimore. If you're a student, you fear walking through your building, and if you're a parent, you wonder if your child will be the next name on the evening news. Dad! You think I never played forever. On the outside, everything appears okay with students like Lillian Green, but just below the surface, there is a lot for us to understand. Even the students who aren't directly affected by it at that school, like they might have not have known the kid who put her or the kid who did the hurting, but they still feel it and they see it and they hear it. extremely tragic situation, beyond tragic. Another name and another story about the dangers of city schools. Another uh, young life in our city is lost uh, over nothing, over nonsense, over stupidity. The rising number of violence within city public schools has been unfathomable. Enough is enough. 
The cycle of violence within our schools is not because students are inherently violent or dangerous, but because of misguidance, carelessness, and the all too easy access to things like firearms. What y'all think about that, man? Now that we're looking a little closer, man. <laughs> that now that we're looking a little closer, like the teacher said, shout out to that teacher, man. That teacher was a um, very good teacher, man. Very good brother, man. I'm, I'm very proud of that brother, man. But he said he 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 did say look a little closer, didn't he? Hit one, didn't he say look a little closer? He said he said he said don't believe the hype, man. It's not bad, man. We gotta look a little closer. The cycle of violence within our schools is not because students are inherently violent or dangerous, but because of misguidance, carelessness, and the all too easy access to things like firearms. Some days this school year, Lillian's life has been bookended between homework and news alerts. And she says there's not always the time to process what has happened and what she often learns about on social media. You're expected to see it and just move on. But, and that's what we kind of have to do. And that's what we've gotten used to doing, like seeing things like that and moving on. We understand the gravity of it happening over and over again. It's kids that we could have seen in a football game before. It's kids who we could have seen in a lacrosse game or a soccer game who we could have made eye contact with before and now they're just gone. Lillian talks with her family about what has happened at other schools this year, but she doesn't think there are enough conversations in the classroom and the community. The kids our age have a lot of big emotions and not everyone has a support system or people to help them deal with those emotions. If we could learn to see the signs of violence before it happens. With so much at stake, Lillian wants to know if anybody is listening. And most of all, show them that violence is not the solution, nor should it ever be. An open letter from a Baltimore City student with a lot to say, and no doubt, not the only student who asks to be heard. And as we grow and change as a city, it will never be easy, but it will be crucial to never stop trying, to move forward, to make schools and streets safe, and allow our children to become our tomorrow. That's a lot to say, but still saying absolutely zero. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she didn't say anything, but you know what I mean, like, <sighs> I mean. No, nah, man, when you got these kids, right, you got to get down to the brass tacks, man. You know, you can talk all of this, right? Single motherhood, bad culture, the music. If she's going to talk all of that, that whole report, right, doesn't address any of the actual problem. But they're going to talk about the guns. Terrible culture, not just bad. <laughs> Abysmal culture, you know what I'm saying? Like, dreadful culture. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Very sad. There are growing concerns over safety at Morgan State University as several students are the victims of brazen robberies along the campus border. Police say it is part of an uptick in robberies throughout the Northeast District as a whole. Fox 45's Keith Daniels spoke with students and police and joins us live now with the latest. Keith. Well, Kai and Mary, the university's president says he's already met with the police commanders here in the Northeast District. BPD has already stepped up patrols, and tonight, that's comforting news for students. At Morgan State University, a security alert. This is HBCU, man. I know some people ain't, some men ain't robbing these bright students, the future of Black <laughs> America. <laughs> It's the future, man, of Black America, man. God, come on, son, man, man, get these, get these one to break, get him a pass, man. Go around the white kids at Temple, man, or fucking at Johns Hopkins or some shit, man. For the news for students at Morgan State University, a security alert for students, detailed in an email 
obtained by Fox 45 News. University President Dr. David Wilson telling students Wednesday about a recent rash of daylight robberies near campus with at least three students victims. School officials say in one incident, the suspect pulled a gun on the victim, then robbed them. Unnerving moments, but they say in all of the incidents involving students, no one was hurt. The latest incident just before 7 p.m. Tuesday on Hillen Road near Argonne Drive. The other robberies last Thursday morning at about 8.30 on Cold Spring Lane and Friday morning at 10, also on Hillen Road. Word of the crimes spreading. It's horrifying. I mean, that's, it's your, when you're in those types of positions, it's just like you think in that moment, I could really die over somebody trying to get something from me. It's definitely something concerning just because usually people are walking to and from campus. Like there's people walking around the area, getting food, stuff like that uh, between classes. So yeah, it's, it's pretty concerning. According to Open Baltimore, crime data that police provide to the city, at last report, there were 11 robberies in seven days in the Northeast District, which includes Morgan State University. 168 robberies total in the area, year to date up to May 6th. Upon learning- God damn, 168 robberies in this area, man. That's not safe, <laughs> Do you think they put that in the prospectus for the university? <laughs> yeah, man. Golly, man. Yeah, man. Part of your course, you can get a ringside seat for some robberies on the street. <laughs> wow, that's a bad neighborhood, Jack. <laughs> Put the university in the place of that, man. <laughs> God. Oh, that's a lot of fucking murder. I mean, ro robberies for just a little area, man. Like, I mean, like, listen, man, not for nothing, man. Like, God, dog, man. <laughs> hey, what, what month is this? This is May. Damn. Yeah. Baltimore, right? They want a day. They all want a day. They, no, this is not all of Baltimore. This is just the area with the, we're around the school. Yeah. <laughs> 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 not the whole, not the whole of Baltimore. It's just for the area. Dude. I wonder how many of those robberies um, are students. Yeah, they said eleven were students. 11 happened on in seven days. No, 11 in seven days on like around here. So, but what was that on the campus or around the campus? Let me let me play it again. Let me see. Again. <laughs> According to Open Baltimore, crime data that police provide to the city at last report, there were 11 robberies in seven days in the Northeast District, which includes Morgan State University. 168 robberies total in the area, year to date, up to May 6th. Upon learning of the increased number of robberies and the student victims, Wilson says he's taken immediate action, including asking BPD to increase patrols of marked vehicles around campus. Campus police will increase patrols and maintain presence in the area where the crimes happened, and there will be an increase of visibility and positioning of security personnel along the busy path to the... An increase of visibility and positioning of security personnel. Campus. I found it a very comforting response knowing that President Wilson is taking, is putting the steps forward to protect our students, and not just the students, the community as a whole. Protect you from who? Future BLM fucking rioter? Oh man. <laughs> who's, he, who's he protecting you from? Future fucking goddamn mammy. And if the security shoots one of those guys, right, coming to rob them, they'll be in the same campus oh, protesting God. the next day. She will be, she will have a bullhorn in her hand. And she'll be crying. It's doing the community as a whole. Well, we're told city police are working with campus police to catch those offenders, including reviewing surveillance footage from cameras that were already installed around campus. We're live now in Northeast Baltimore. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News.
Keith, thank you. A growing concern over the Baltimore Police Department's clearance rate. During a public safety hearing yesterday, BPD leaders said this year's homicide clearance rate is about 40 percent, meaning there is a 60 percent chance someone will get away with murder in Baltimore City. Last year. That's not bad. That's not bad, man. I mean, think about it, man. Murder after murder after murder after murder, 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 murder. broad daylight, brain, blah, 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 blah. no one, no one cooperating. I mean, it's just. You think the New York rate is lower than 60%? New York? Um, I think New York's a little higher. I think New York solves more murders than, 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 than Baltimore because New York has. New York has, um, I think, 11 million people, and they have about 10, 15 more murders than Baltimore, who has 650,000 people. So <laughs> it's like <laughs> Baltimore, <laughs> Baltimore, Baltimore, New York City is, is, is just, uh, Baltimore's a dangerous place, Jack. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Growing concern over the Baltimore Police Department's clearance rate. During a public safety hearing yesterday, BPD leaders said this year's homicide clearance rate is about 40 percent, meaning there is a 60 percent chance someone will get away with murder in Baltimore City. Last year, homicide detectives cleared just 36 percent of cases. The national average is over 57 percent. The clearance rates are important because a cleared homicide means that you've identified an offender and uh, and that they are likely to be, you know, indicted, charged, taken to trial. They're likely to be punished. They're likely to go to prison for committing that homicide. It's very frustrating for crime victims, for their families, um, as well as for uh, law enforcement and for the community in general. As for non-fatal shootings, the clearance rate is even lower. It's at 28% compared to 27% last year. I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also yeah, man, it's, 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 now that we've looked a little closer, Mr. Teacher, man, it's not looking good, man. And on that note, man, I'm out of here. Peace out, man.